Happy Cinco de Mayo, Calvary. I hope that you have some plans to enjoy some delicious tacos, burritos, and carne asada today. But first, let me share with you the word for the day. Don't you hate being accused? We've all been there. Someone comes up to us and starts explaining all that we did wrong. It is very unpleasant. Other people aren't the only ones that accuse us. The Bible calls Satan the accuser. He is eager to highlight our failures. And of course, we accuse ourselves, mentally replaying our mess ups over and over again. It's also bad if we encounter false accusations, but at least with a false accusation, we know that we can defend ourselves. But it is far worse when we encounter true and just accusations, because then there is no defense. There's no excuse. All we can do is agree with the accusation. When we encounter those true accusations about our own sinfulness, there is good news if we are trusting in Jesus Christ. Listen to what Paul writes in Romans 8, verses 31 through 34. He says this, What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things. Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? Christ Jesus is the one who died. More than that, who was raised? Who is at the right hand of God? Who indeed is interceding for us? In these verses, Paul asks a series of questions and gives us answers. First, who can be against us? The answer is no one, because God is for us and did not spare his own son. He gave Jesus up for us, and he's going to give us all things. Christ is sufficient for every need that we have. He will help us through every trial, every valley, and every accusation. The next question, who can bring a charge against God's elect? Now, God's elect, that's you and me. That's anyone who has placed their faith in Jesus Christ. They are God's elect. Now, true, our enemies, Satan, or even our own conscience may charge us with doing wrong, but we will never be found guilty because God has justified, declared us not guilty because of all that Jesus did. No one can bring an effective charge against us because Christ has secured our not guilty verdict. Paul's final question, who will condemn us? The answer again is no one. The specific work of Jesus saves us from condemnation. Listen to what Paul says he did. He died. He was raised from the dead. He ascended to God and is now at the right hand of God. Jesus is praying for us now. Jesus' death and resurrection accomplished once and for all our justification. Now Jesus is right next to God, continually intervening on your behalf, on my behalf. No condemnation is going to stick. So today, let's live in the joy and the peace that comes from knowing we're not condemned. When your thoughts begin to drag you down, remind yourself of who is praying for you right now. Jesus has got your back. He won't Let that condemnation stick because he's already paid the ultimate price. I hope this gives you a real reason to celebrate on this Cinco de Mayo. Hey, if this word for the day has encouraged you, would you please like it, share it, or leave a comment, and have a great day.